Okay, so we're here at the Tag Mods booth, and we're here with Ethan, which is the director owner of Tag Mods. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy hearing it like that, now, yeah. isn't it? Isn't yeah. it good, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, if you want to do a quick ex explanation about Tag Mods, what you guys actually do? Okay, so Tag Mods is technology and gaming modified, essentially. Yep. So, essentially, what we do is we combine art and technology. So, mm -hmm. I take uh, ideas from like pop culture gaming uh, brands obviously as you'll see in a second mm -hmm. uh, and combine that with computers and figure out ways to either implement computers from scratch or use existing companies product uh, and make it look better in general for, for like events and stuff yeah and how long have you been doing it for uh, just over four years now four which years? is kind of hard to believe just in my head but yeah, yeah. It's quite a while now well I've got a few questions to ask you sounds, sounds good man. all right so your favorite build so far my favorite build so far I don't think I've topped the Fallout lunchbox yet Lunchbox. Um, I remember that build. Yeah, so that, that build taught me, uh, it was one of my first full open loop builds. Uh, it was my first build with a custom res. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I've learned, that's where I learned like all my weathering techniques properly. And I did, I've done like three revisions of it now. And it's just the build that's like taught me the most because it had integrated electronics, uh, weathering, full piping, like weird pipes as well. They weren't just like 90 degree yeah. bends, they're like loop de loops and W's and all that kind of stuff. So it's a build that really, really pushed me mm -hmm. to like the next level. And I think that's led to pretty much everything you see here now. So. Is that the build we had at the studio? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, your hardest build? Hardest build. Did that. <laughs> <laughs> From an engineering standpoint, that. Yeah. Um, every build has its own challenges because you've got different deadlines and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Like the first iteration, the Quake logo was really hard as well because I've never built anything at that scale before. Mm -hmm. um, so every build kind of presents its own challenge, uh, but just based off recent memory, it's, it's that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what would be your most time-consuming build? Shenron. Shenron. That's, yeah, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> uh, I decided it was a good idea to sculpt a dragon. Yeah. That was not a good idea. Oh, no, it was a good idea. It's just something I'm never going to do again. Yeah, So yeah, I like, yeah. did, went through all that process, and that was probably three, four hundred hours in that yeah. build. That was about three years ago, I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was, was at... Um, so at the same time, PC4 went on actually started, because I remember we saw yeah. each other at... Um, yeah. What was that? That, that, that little little event in Melbourne. Yeah, it yeah. was, yeah. At Melbourne Uni. I can't remember what it was called. But. Um, so how long have you been modding for? Uh, yeah, four years. Just yeah. four years. So since you started tag, is the same time you started modding? Yeah, pretty much. I started, did my first mod, and about two months later, I'm yeah. like, oh, a friend asked me to do another one, and yeah. it just kind of snowballed, and yeah. it kind of became tag from there. So, oh, okay. Yeah. And what made you get into modding? Like, what was your passion with modding? I've always liked tinkering with things. Yeah. I had, like, a big old computer that couldn't fit under my desk in my um, little uni dorm room, so I'd started cutting into it and was like yeah. I can make this look better and like a Batman theme build and yeah just snowballed from there man yeah um, so once you've done with the builds yep. what actually happens with them do you keep them or do they get stripped down again for other pieces or uh, depends on the build mm -hmm. uh, most builds uh, are just done for like events and like social media campaigns and that kind of stuff so they end up back at my place all torn apart mm -hmm. uh, the cases will soon be featured on my mod wall yep. so it's going to become my new video backdrop so I'm going to like take them all, my favourite parts from each build and I'm going to like staple them to a wall yeah. haven't figured out how I'm going to mount them all yet but I'll figure that out later uh, and then obviously if it's a client build they take the build at the end because they've paid for it yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, generally more often than not they just go to the events look all pretty and then come back and get torn apart so most of the builds that you have here are these like client builds for example for Intel itself or, or sort of being at IM yep. or are these just custom builds just for the event I need to custom builds just for the event um, Intel asked me to do a couple of showstopper builds which is why there's the two main ones directly behind me yep. uh, and then we decided to go with a build based off the other main games that are here so you got Overwatch, CSGO, Dota and Starcraft mm -hmm. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So looking at these builds behind us, we'll start off with the Skull build. Skull. Yeah, yeah, the Skull build. Um, obviously this was a bit of a collaboration with Simple Mods as well. It was, yeah. Yep. So this is 100% Alex's design. Yep. Uh, so Alex designed it and I happened to have the machinery needed to produce it, uh, especially in the time constraint that we had. Yeah. So he sent me all the files and stuff, I machined it, made sure it would all work as a PC, shipped it back up to him and he put the jigsaw puzzle together and put all the, did all the piping and all the hard work. So how long was this build from, from as a scratch build from start to finish? How long did it take to build? Uh, I think he spent about two, three weeks or so on the design. Uh, it took me about two weeks to machine the whole thing and then he had like three days to put it together. So did you put it together before you sent it to Alex or was it something like, oh, it's going to fit? I roughly mocked it up, so I did it without screws basically. Yeah, so I made yeah, sure yeah. that all the ribs would fit in the um, slats that I'd uh, carved. I glued yeah. all the skull together, I made sure it all worked. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, it was just 
yeah. like, yeah, no, this should work pretty well, and then just ship it off, make sure the motherboard screws lined up, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So on a, pre on a previous discussion we've had, um, this wasn't supposed to look like this, wasn't it? This was supposed to be a res at the front, is that correct? Uh, yeah, there was meant to be a full reservoir in the front of the skull here, yeah. but uh, my CNC decided to uh, commando itself, yeah. which is like coming along and it just like burned Which the happens. The, yeah, yeah, just buried the head of the yeah, CNC yeah, yeah, into the bed and like snapped the lead screw and yeah, yeah it was a bit of a nightmare there. Is that something you might look into the future, but being, being you've got the build ready, is yeah. that something you might actually, say example, do the res for the skull? Uh, that'll be up to Alex, being the yeah. fact that it's his build and that yeah. this won't be going home with me. Yeah. Um, so if he wants to revisit it and carve in the res, and it's probably it's good practice as well. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. um, I've never done a, a CNC based res, so I'd gladly do this as just kind of an experiment. Even if yeah. you just do it as the skull and put the skull on the Yeah, that'd be great. You know I mean? yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of the idea. That's awesome. Yeah. And this one here, this has been a bit of a showpiece for yeah, uh, IM. Absolutely fantastic. So obviously you got this the. I'm not even going to touch it because it's actually starting to fall apart again. So um, obviously it's the i9 casing for the for the CPU, yep. and you've made a larger version of it. Yeah, yeah it's a direct scale up version yeah. of the i9 packaging. Um, so this featured like a lot of general challenges from mm. uh, making sure it was buildable, making sure we could actually well build the shape itself, yeah. given the fact that there's obviously a bunch of complex angles and all that kind of stuff. So the center column is three mil aluminium. It's all uh, been bent, it was two pieces, it was then welded yeah. together. And then both your acrylic panels come off, the whole motherboard train that comes out, so you can sort of build in it yeah. and not have to work around those, all those weird little angles and stuff, because yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, so what's the specs on it? Uh, the specs, obviously it's 9900K, because it'd be rude not to put that, <laughs> especially after building it based off the packaging exactly, of the 9900K. Yeah, exactly. uh, then we're running a Aorus 2080 water force, yes. uh, the Z390 uh, Aorus Master. Um, 32 gig of Team Group Excalibur RAM, uh, 512 gig uh, Intel 660p. Mm -hmm. um, what else we got? Cool, uh, cool Master V850 Gold power supply. Nice. Uh, we will have ca cable mod custom cables in it when we take it back and shoot it because yeah. they rocked up the Wednesday we drove here. Oh, really? That's it's always I mean. the way. Uh, same as the lights, which is why none of the PCs are <laughs> properly lit because I didn't have any LED issues. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. all sitting in a box waiting for me at home. That's awesome. But it's just the way <laughs> things are sometimes, yeah. especially in like tight time crunches. So all these builds were done in two weeks. Um, That's a lot of So work. originally we were just doing the two showstoppers yeah. and then uh, it was agreed on that we'd have the whole booth. So we did the, the last minute organizing and then kind of that mad dash. Yeah. Uh, so the other four builds were all done in two weeks on top of finishing these two off. Wow, so wow. It's been a hectic and couple of weeks. You've used some sort of a uh, special reflective on this as well, yeah? So someone oh, yeah, took a photo. Yeah. yeah. So Which we'll, we'll take a photo for social media today for that. So guys can actually see it on our social media. But um, this is, honestly, every time we do something at any event, it's always, you can always tell that it's done by tag. Like you've got so many modders here in Australia, obviously you can tell who, you know, whose modders do what. But specifically when you do a mod, I can definitely 100% know it's actually your build. It's specifically to you. Because it's always the, 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 the it's fine always details and crazy. Yeah. The detail you go into, it, even just a simple mod um, for the propeller machines back here, but especially these two here, yeah. with yourself with simple mods and, and, this, and this rig here itself, um, we really, really do appreciate what you do for the modding group in Australia. So, yeah. yeah, I like my fine detail and all that kind of thing. Exactly, so, and exactly. I, and I like to push boundaries. So. Well, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, to be the best, you've got to do the best. <laughs> anyway, Ethan, thank you very much for that. All right, guys, um, we'll have um, Ethan's links in the description below so you can actually go like him on uh, the Facebook, you got Twitter. Yeah, Instagram. Instagram, YouTube, YouTube Twitch. Twitch. Um, we'll, have, we'll, have all those, we'll have all those links in the description below, guys. Thank you, Ethan, very much for that. And, guys, see you next one. Have fun.